welcome back to the next video in today's video i will show you how to create an android plugin for performing background operations using work manager in your gado game app or uh, so uh, i have already made a video on how to you how to do background operation using work manager but that was for one time request this is for period periodic work request now what do i mean by background operation uh, so even if the user closes the app if you want to perform some background operation like calling an api and syncing it it to your local database you can do that uploading a file to a server those kind of thing the only caveat is uh, the os will decide when to run your background operation uh, so you don't have much control over it and that's why i can't show you the output but um, once you install this app if you are following this video uh, like once you install the gado app you can uh, close your app and might check after 4 to 5 hours and you should be able to see that the background operation is performing correctly uh, so yeah uh, let's get started so firstly uh, uh, you will have to create so also what is the difference between one time request and periodic request in this video we are using periodic request and the advantage is that suppose the user opens the app for the very first time and then the user does not open the app for the for 10 days so in between 10 days your uh, background operation will keep on happening periodically like it depends again on the os it might happen uh, 10 times in a day or just one time in a day so yeah let's get started so firstly i have created this uh, cheat sheet Uh, from gado documentation so that i can quickly show you how to create a plugin so what you have to do open android studio and create an android project it can be an mt views project or jetpack compose project once you create a project just right click over here new module select library and here you can give any name i have already created called my library give some package name click on finish i have already created it so won't create it again next uh, you will have to go to Uh, build dot gradle dot kts and here first you have to add your gado library so i am using gado 4 dot 2 dot 1 but if you are using some higher version in future make sure you update this version you can also find this version on maven central next i am using work manager so this is the library which help us to perform background operation even when the app is completely closed then i am using retrofit like this will help us to do http call in the background Uh, and data store is uh, this is a preference data store which is used to store normal key value data but i have also done a video on uh, room database which is a sqlite database for android uh, where you can store large amount of data and here i have used coroutines and uh, so coroutines is like background thread like the, uh, virtual threads for uh, kotlin next uh, firstly i have uh, created this interface which is required by retrofit and apart from the base url you have to put everything over here and this is a get request which gives us a response in this form of post so if you see my post class it is a data class so we will get all this stuff but in my preferences data store i am just saving this title but if you want you can save all those things as well next i have created this uh, preferences.kt so this is like helping us to store normal key value data using preferences data store so yeah you can use that so here save string data which will help us to save that title from our api call and getting get string data is used for getting the data i'm also so saving the count value and getting the count value to just to analyze how many times the background operations has been called so if you want you can keep this otherwise don't uh, use it and here i'm using a singleton for our preferences data store and this is the extension for creating a data store also there is something called dagger hilt which is used for dependency injection in android uh, i couldn't figure it out for how to do it for gado plugin uh, yeah that's why i am not using that i am manually creating objects but actually that is a bad practice uh, but if you want to know how to inject dagger hilt you can watch my native android video for the same uh, thing uh, where i have i am using dagger hilt uh, next Uh, i have defined a custom worker over here so this is the actual class which help us to define background operation it extends from coroutine worker and this is the method where you can define what background operation you want to perform so here you can see i'm uh, calling our api and if the api is successful 
i am creating our preference data store object and calling the save string data method i am also getting the current count value and incre incrementing it by one and again saving it back and every if everything is good i am giving it a success message otherwise i am telling it to retry next i have also created this network module so uh, here you can see this is the base url for my api and here i am creating an http client which is required by retrofit this is for uh, json conversion here i have defined our retrofit instance and this is for creating uh, our demo api's instance next if you see i have created this my application class which extends from application and also needs to extend configuration dot provider so we have to override this method so here you can see i'm manually creating all these objects which is not a good practice uh, but yeah it is what it is uh, and next we also need to create this custom worker factory which creates object for our custom worker which we have defined over here next uh, i'll show next coming back to our godot android plugin so here I, this is our extending from godot plugin or i have also extended lifecycle owner because we require access to lifecycle scope so i have created a variable for our preference data store and this is for all lifecycle code next you can define your plugin name but be careful and remember your plugin name because we will be using this in lot of other places as well and once the godot setup is completed i am initializing our preference data store here i have also created a signal which will help us to send uh, the data which is stored inside preference data store from uh, android plugin to godot side and this method will get called from godot side so firstly here you can see i'm using periodic work request and i want the uh, request to uh, uh, you know perform in every one hour but it's not guaranteed again it depend on the os if you say set it as one seconds uh, it will never get executed in one second again it depends on the os and here i have also added a flex time interval which means that the work will be executed between 45 minutes to one hour and i have set up this back, back of criteria if you want you can also set constraints so here this is how you can define constraints like if you want your background operation to run only when there is proper network connectivity you can set constraints like this there are other constraints as well which you can just see like this set so these are all other constraints you can use whatever makes sense to you and if you are using constraint make sure you uncomment this line next we are getting our instance for work manager and we are queuing uh, our unique periodic work so i have given it some name and also once the app is opened i am retrieving the data from our preference data store so here you can see i am getting some data and i am also getting the count value and i am sending it back to the godot side next you have to go to your android manifest.xml first define internet permission because we are calling an api next i have just copied this from documentation but this should be your plugin name this should be your package name so if you want you can see your package name over here and this is the our godot android plugin file name also you have to write this extra bit of code this is for work manager initialization once that is done go to project folder go to my library create a folder called export scripts template inside that first create plugin.cfg again i have copy pasted this from docs and this should be your plugin name you can change the description and author to whatever you feel like next i have created uh, export plugin.gd again this i have copied from docs uh, only thing important is this should be your plugin name also i have added one more method of get android dependency so whatever dependency you have in apart from godot inside your build.gradle you have to add it over here so i have added work manager i have added retrofit i have added retrofit json i have added preference data store i have added coroutines and we even though we haven't defined this inside so build.gradle we require this for, uh, uh, because uh, the godot plugin does not uh, get bundled with this so we have to add this as well okay um uh, let's see what the documentation says next so we are done with this as well next you will have to open your terminal you will have to go to your android project so here go to android project cd to your android project on terminal and run this command once you run this command you will can go to your library build outputs ar and here you should see two dot ar files 
I have already copied those file to my Godot project that's why you are not seeing it over here next create your Godot project inside that create a folder called add-ons create inside that create a folder with your plugin name inside that create a folder called bin and inside bin create two folders debug and release now copy the debug AR file to the debug debug folder release AR to release folder so I will show you that I'll go to my Godot project uh, add-ons my plugins bin debug here you can see i have copied my debug file to debug folder but here you will have to change the file name to whatever your plugin name is dash debug.ar similarly for release as well your plugin name dash release.ar once that is done come back to your plugin folder and you will have to copy these two files from your android plugin export plugin.gd and plugin.cfg over here okay inside your godot project once that is done go to your godot project and here you can see i have created a label okay and if you see the script which has been attached i am referencing again to our plugin name and inside ready function i am initializing our plugin and adding our test signal as well and once we get a test signal uh, i'm displaying it inside our label so we get a callback and if the android plugin is properly initialized i am calling the do work method as well uh, also you will have to go to project install android build template i have already done that once that is done click on export click add add android make sure you click use gradle build target hdk should be at least 34 uh, currently gado is only supporting to 33 but i hope in future they update it to 34 because the android libraries which you are using require hdk 34 also make sure you enable the architecture for your android device which you are running if you don't know check all four of those also at the bottom you might be seeing a button called fix import make sure you click that as well uh, once that is done uh, also go to project project settings go to plugins make sure you check this as well also next go to android okay build and open this config.gradle here also you will have to change it to 34 this has been updated to 34 and build tools should also be 34 next let's see what else am i missing i've told you all of this all of this as well and i have told you if you are doing it this setup for first time you also need to open editor editor settings inside your godot and add debug key path as well as android hdk path and you also need to you if you are uh, using wi-fi for remote debugging you can check that checkbox as well but i think that should be it uh, thank you for watching bye